All right, so today we're gonna to take a look at the 4070 uh, non-TI Founders Edition card to see if we can push it and get a whole nother tier of performance out of it. I still firmly believe that the RTX 4070 was uh, always intended to be a higher tiered card that they've now artificially limited in ways. So we're gonna see if we can get it to come even close to the TI variant. What's the matter? Oh, how is anyone supposed to manage these cables? Yeah, this is pretty bad, but I'm gonna assume you haven't heard the news. Uh, what news? Corsair <laughs> has something completely new coming. Dude. So I'll be using MSI Afterburner to do this today. A um, couple things I want to note, we are in the latest uh, retail driver. This is 531.61. This is different than the one that was provided to us for testing purposes because it is technically newer. Um, typically what I would do is I would go in here and also adjust the voltage slider to give us maximum voltage at a lower clock speed just to make sure we were getting max uh, available voltage to it. But it is locked down no matter what. At least there's no beta versions available right now. So there we go. No betas available for Afterburner. That could unlock that. Uh, but you see, I do have the unlock voltage control, voltage monitoring, force constant voltage. I tried reference design, third party extended. No matter what, we do not get a slider. And normally we would, even with a brand new graphics card. So it's kind of interesting to me that I can't move that curve. So that's problem number one with overclocking this card. Number two, you can see there is additional power limit to us. Now remember, this is a 200 watt TDP or TGB card, or excuse me, TDP card. So 200 watts total power is what is available to this. That's extremely low versus what we've seen in the past. So that was like telltale sign number one that it wasn't just their story of efficiency that they were going for. I really do think that they've reduced the power as much as possible to keep things artificially lower. Um, but we do have 10% available to us, which means that we have a theoretical 220 watt power limit. So what we need to do first, and we can do this all in real time, is I'm gonna start with like Time Spy Extreme which is a pretty good load on the card without RT cores or tensor cores being taken into consideration. It's just like the 5888 CUDA cores that we're, that we're talking about here. So once I get 3D Mark going, I'm gonna do a custom run with a windowed mode and looping, and then I'm gonna see what some of our values and stuff change to as we're um, seeing what our current limits are. So right now, I have a feeling that our current limit as to why we are performance limited is more than likely going to be power. Bef see, with the 4070 Ti and the 4080 and 4090, we saw voltage limit before power limit, which is backwards from what it was in the past. But that's because of just how much frequency that we're seeing now with the new cards and how dense the core count, uh, counts are, voltage limit was being hit far before power limit, which is why having that additional up to 600 watt didn't make a difference because we couldn't add more voltage, which means we were still gonna be limited no matter where the power slider was so that we couldn't get a whole lot more clock out of it because it was already just pushed to the max. So what we can do now is while this test is running, we'll be able to take a look at various things that are happening here uh, through MSI Afterburner and I can even move that over to the side. So you can see our core clock instantly went to 2760 and then it was like 2775 for 2790 for a second. I'm gonna clear this history. So our temperature is already like 62, 63, and it got there fairly quickly, but it doesn't really get any hotter than that, even with this tiny cooler here. But look at this, we are power limit on one. We do hit voltage limit momentarily. Let me move this over so it's a little easier on Phil. We do hit voltage limit momentarily, but it kind of trades back and forth when it's not power limit, it's voltage limit and then back. And you can see our core clock is starting to drop a little bit. That's because our temperature is starting to climb. So first things first, I am going to go ahead and just sort of max out the cooler. It actually gets fairly loud for this little cooler. We'll just go like, I don't know, 80% maybe, which is gonna be a heck of a lot faster than it was giving us uh, out of the box. Okay, so we've already dropped down to 2640, 2730, 2640, 2670. 2715, and you can see right here, it is just power limit. So I'm now gonna max the power limit out and the temp limit with it. Priority is power limit. We should lock our frequency now. So there's 2700, 2745, 2760, 2730. So you can see before our power in that first 
playing around was like around 195. Now we're up over 200, but it's still not enough to, to get us out of power limit territory, which is unfortunate because as you can see here, it's still fluctuating when it comes to our, uh, our frequency there. So now we're dealing with TGP versus TDP. Um, and TGP is the amount of power available to the GPU. Now we can have full core clocks and we can have full load on a graphics card and still have it be under the TGP or the total graphics power because of the fact that it could be an easy engine to run. So that's how you'll sometimes see full core clock and a little bit lower power usage and it's just still like it, TGP, TDP, look it up. There's a major difference between the two. Anyway, moving on. So you can see the first run, the second run was kind of squiggly. The third run, much more stable. Now the second test is a lot more dynamic as it's moving around and stuff, but we're still trading off between voltage limit and power limit. So it's really unfortunate the fact that I can't really do much with the power li uh, limit aspect of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just see what happens if I up at 100 megahertz on the clock. I need to find where we're gonna crash first. There's 150. I'm gonna go 175. See, we're not really getting any more frequency now out of ad asking for more because we are so power limited that the frequency can't go high enough. So what's gonna end up happening now is if the load suddenly comes down, you see our trending upward right there as I was changing the clocks. But what's gonna happen now is if the load gets easy for a second, it can rubber band way up high past where we think it's gonna go, which will lead to a crash. Yeah, there's 3,000 at 20 or 230, but I don't, that's actually going to be a bit higher. I feel like that will go higher than 3,000. I'm going to try Heaven real quick. Heaven's a lot easier to run than Time Spy, so we should be able to get a more realistic frequency number out of our offset. Yeah, see 3015, and I brought it down to 200 because I knew if I left it at 230, it would probably crash. So we hit 3015, or I know we hit 3030 for a second there. Will it hit? 3,100, yeah, 3,100. But look at the difference here. Look at our power usage. We were seeing over 200, and this is 165 in heaven. And we're artifacting really badly. So yeah, we need to go back to like 220. See, and now our artifacting stopped. So we're at 3030 30, 30 on the frequency under this load. I now wanna see if we can pass 3D Mark Time Spy, extreme. So the RTX 4070 FE scored an 8531. The 4070 Ti, which was a tough card, um, which might have outperformed the founders by a little bit, is an 11,035. We have like 3,500 points to make up. I don't think it's gonna come anywhere close. And the worrying thing about that score gap is it's almost like there's room for them to slide a super card in there. I don't think NVIDIA is dumb enough to do that this time. Like, I don't, I don't think they're dumb. Well, okay, I don't, I don't know what NVIDIA is capable of anymore. So we went from an 8531 to a 9169. So, yeah, to a 9169, that's not a lot. Um, it's about 630 points, 638 points, something like that. That's a far cry from the 11,035 we needed. I wonder what this translates to in actual game performance. So we're gonna do Cyberpunk 2077, which is a thousand percent GPU bound. We're gonna do it with no RT, and we're gonna see what happened to our uh, 1440p score. So we could take any sort of CPU bottleneck out of the equation here, and we're gonna see if we, saw any sort of like tangible FPS improvement. So what we're looking for with Cyberpunk No RT in 1440, and this is ultra settings, is we are looking to beat 81 FPS. All right, so it's tangible. We went from an 81 FPS to an 87. So six FPS improvement for moving some sliders. It's not too bad at all. Um, let's just do one more check real quick. Oh, by the way, the uh, 4070 Ti was 104. So <laughs> huge gap there. Uh, I wanna put this into perspective for you. The amount of gap between the 4070 and 4070 Ti performance charts that we've created is the same gap between the 3070 and the 3090. Now, anyone that has used the 3070 or 3090 knows those two cards are vastly separate in both the price and the performance. 
The 3090 was an absolute monster of a graphics card for gaming when it was the top of the line card. So to have it be separated by 3070, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 Ti, 3090, five cards apart, the same score gap between the 3070 and, or 4070 and 4070 Ti now, you can see why reviewers are kind of saying what we're saying about this not being a great, uh, it's not a great story. Because this card, for its price, should be performing significantly higher than it is, in our opinion. All right, we'll just go ahead and do Guardians of the Galaxy now. It's a whole different engine. So we definitely jumped up from 163 to 183. However, it still doesn't come close to the 204 that the 4070 Ti has. So let's, let's kind of talk about this real quick. And I think that this might shed a little bit of light, again, as to why us reviewers are just not that receptive of the 4070 card. The gap in performance between the 4070 and 4070 Ti is on average twice the distance between the 4070 and the 4080 in our testing. So what that tells us is that either this card is being substantially throttled through some means, whether it be sh uh, shave down CUDA cores or power limits or both, voltage, whatever. A lot of people saying this card was probably intended to be a 4060 looks a lot more true because the performance difference is just absolutely massive. I, I, I've never ever seen a TI non-TI be this far apart. For example, we have a 3070 Founders Edition card on here at 119 FPS in 1440, and the 3070 Ti FE 131. So 119 to 131 versus a 163 to 204. So we're talking 40 FPS difference there versus 12 FPS on the uh, 3070 to versus 3070 Ti. And that holds true for all of our tests. If you, it, it holds true for all of our testing. And it's, it's just sad to see that it's more than likely. And I think this all honestly just stems from the whole renaming of the 4080 12 gig, which again, it's just, that was a slimy move. But these cards and their development and stuff, this was already in the works. So if they had to shift everything down, then every, I, I feel like their, their gaps are this season the season are just all kinds of all over the place where in the past you could see a very clear curve, very clear curve on the hierarchy of the family of, of cards. This time it is like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Anyways, I still firmly believe for this price, the 4070 card is just a skip. It's a skip. It gives you good performance, but if you look at the fact that AMD reduced the price of the 6950 XT, and this, the 6950 XT basically beats this card in ray tracing and every other aspect of gaming. If you can find one for the 600 bucks that the price is reduced to, I would take the 6950 over, or XT over this any day, honestly. All right, there you go. If I sound overly disappointed, I am. I just, I'm a graphics enthusiast. I love for, to crank the settings and I feel like these mid-range cards should absolutely be able to do that and not feel like you're getting completely shafted for the amount of money that you're spending. If you can still get a 3080, I'd, I'd definitely get one of those over a 4070, that's for sure. So, or even a 3070 Ti over a 4070, to be honest, I'd be fine with that. All right guys, thanks for watching. Nope, we cannot overclock a 4070 to get anywhere near a 4070 Ti because, well, Nvidia put an entire freaking valley between the two, enough to build a freaking civilization within at the gap that they are. Slimy mother. <laughs>